Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Christian Lehman Church. Welcome to our Sunday morning worship service. Um, we are so excited and blessed that you decided to spend this morning with us, uh, worshiping the Lord and learning from his word with your church family. Um, if you're new or visiting or you just happen to stumble upon our page, we want to say welcome. Um, we want to we want to greet you. Let us know who you are in the comment section. Um, we also have a virtual social hall later on that you can feel free to join. Um, but we just want to say uh, you're welcome here. And I know during this time of COVID and um, and uh, the pandemic that finding a church, if you're if you're looking, can be really scary and really difficult. And so uh, we just want to make that as easy as possible for you. We have really, really friendly people in our church who would love to connect with you and um, and learn more about who you are. And also, if you if you want more information about our church and, and who we are and what we're all about, um, feel free to visit christianlayman.org um, and all, all of our stuff is on there. Um, but welcome and um, we're glad you're here with us today. Um, this morning, we're going to start our worship service with worship. <laughs> and um, this is personally my favorite, uh, favorite part of the service. No offense to our pastors. Um, but there's some powerful things that come from worship and, and, and also from music and from art and just lifting up a glorious sound to the Lord. Um, and that doesn't mean um, the best singer or the best player or anything like that, but the Lord is pleased with your hearts. And if your heart desires to worship him and desires to um, sing out praises because you love him so much, he, lo he loves that. You can be toned up. He loves that. And so this morning, we're just going to worship. And I invite you to um, I invite you to just come before the Lord, um, to quiet your hearts, to prepare them, to be in his presence, to be in the presence of a magnificent and holy and beautiful God. Um, and and just ask him to come and to, to be present with you this morning. Um, we're going to sing a, a few songs, but I, I invite you just to to make this time um, not just some hour on a Sunday morning, but make this time count. Make this time a um, special time with you and the Lord. And I will <laughs> fix this really quick because it's a little, it's a little, okay. <laughs> All right, let me pray to start off this morning and uh, we'll get started. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for... Um, Another, another morning to worship you. Another morning to, to wake up, to breathe, and to live, Lord. Um, we are so humbled to um, be able to worship you freely and to be in your presence, Lord. To have church family, to still continue to worship virtually, Lord, in the, in the midst of all the stuff that's going on in the world. Um, we're so blessed to have that. We thank you, Lord. Um, God, I ask that you would be with um, every single person this morning um, as we worship, as we as we open up your word, Lord. I pray for, I pray for openness. I, I just pray, Lord, that we would be open um, to hearing, to seeing what you're doing, um, that our hearts would just uh, be completely open to you. Um, Lord, I pray that um, whatever distractions, whatever things that are holding us back, maybe that are um, taking our mind away from being completely present with you. I pray, Lord, that those would be set aside, that your, our burdens um, would be left at the foot of the cross, Lord, and we would be able to surrender that to you. Um, we thank you for being a good and gracious God, and we give you this time, Lord. We ask that you would be glorified and magnified in every home this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Worship.
This next song that we're going to sing is called Open Space, and we've done it a few times. Uh, this is it's like Josh's song. <laughs> um, but as we sing this song, I, I, I want to invite you to do exactly that. Um, it, it's, it's kind of a, a beautiful song with very simple words, but um, powerful words. And I feel like it's, it's kind of a prayer, um, a prayer just asking God to draw close to pull us into his heart, to make us more and more like him so that we may be transformed by his love that is patient, his love that is kind and gracious. Um, it's saying, God, you can have my heart. Whatever you want to do, whatever you want to say, whatever you want to move or change in my life, I have faith in you. I trust you. And so, Lord, take it. Lord, have all of me. Um, and so I... I encourage you um, during this song just to you don't even have to sing the words maybe you just listen um, but quiet your, your hearts and just come before the Lord so honest and so raw um, and if this is something difficult for you to do to, to say God take my heart um, wrestle with that talk to him about that 
Um, but it truly is a beautiful and freeing thing when we can say, God, whatever you want, I have faith in you and I'm all in. Let's, let's sing this prayer together. Close to your heart, may I be a pure reflection of all you are. Love that is patient, love that is kind, love that keeps no offenses, no wrongs in mind. Make me like Jesus. Change whatever you want to change. 
Lord God, we, we are so in awe of who you are. And Lord, we would not want to give our hearts away to anyone else. You are our Lord. You are our Savior. You are our King. You are our Father. You are our friend. You are the faithful one. And because of those things, Lord, it, oh, it should be easy to give our hearts away to you. To say, Lord, we are all in. We trust you completely in every aspect of our lives. We trust you. We let go. We surrender. It should be easy, Lord. But I know that it's hard. I know that it's hard sometimes. And so, Lord, I, I pray that in those moments that are, it's difficult to let go, it's difficult to trust, it's difficult to let you in, God, I pray that you would um, be with us. I pray that you would continue to help us wrestle through all of that. I pray, Lord, in the midst of big decisions, making tough choices, Lord, that we would look to you, keep our eyes focused on you, and slowly be able to give our entire hearts, our entire lives to you. We love you, Lord. We thank you so much, and we ask and we pray that you would be glorified in this place. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now for Community Life, I'd like to hand it over to Denny. Thanks, Caitlin. Good morning, CLC, reporting to you live from a pineapple under the sea. Welcome, this is our Community Lifetime and I hope everyone's doing well, keeping safe and in the midst of the smoke in the air, hope you guys are staying in and keeping healthy. Uh, simply put, the mission statement here at CLC is to make disciples who love God, love people, and who, thank you, Scott, serve the world. One way that we seek to do that is connecting with people here in our community. So if this is your first time tuning in, we'd love to get to know you. Simply reach us at www.christianlayman.org forward slash contact. It's a great way to get plugged in here with different home groups, different events, and just the many different ways that uh, CLC could really just be there and to love on you and your family. Um, definitely check it out. and. Looking forward to hearing from you soon. Today, also right after service, is our CLC College Welcome event. Have I said uh, welcome to the students yet? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, we are so glad that you're here. And if this is your first time, uh, we'd love to get to know you. 
I know personally, having gone through CLC College Ministry, it's definitely been a really big part of my time um, at Cal. And definitely, you know, six years later, here I am, and I haven't turned back except for Dino Nuggets after service in the Fellowship Hall. Um, it's definitely a wonderful community and definitely many, many families just ready to love on our college students. For more information, definitely check it out at our CLC Student Welcome right after service. The Zoom link will be posted in the end credits of today's Sunday service. Speaking of food and time of fellowship, uh, on September 20th, the CLC Women's Ministry will be having a cooking series that will be kicked off by our very own Iron Chef, Terry Yim. Um, she will be leading uh, the women's ministry via Zoom through a cooking lesson on making japchae. So definitely make sure to check that out. Um, the Zoom information and evite can be found in the e-news. And also uh, you can reach out to Tiffany Lucas for more information. All you need are some sesame seeds, glass noodles, and an appetite for good conversation. Definitely check it out. As we are heading into um, this new season ahead of us for Pastor Andrew and his family, as they get ready to make the move overseas, um, definitely make sure to check out our CLC social hall after service on the 20th and 27th of next month. Uh, be a great time to be in conversation to hear more about the cool things that are in store for them. Um, and definitely just a time of just really being able to express our appreciation for them for all the ways that they've served um, our community over the years. Definitely make sure to check it out. So now as I get ready to sign off for this week, um, hope everyone is keeping safe. Um, definitely missing you all this week, uh, especially, and just um, hoping all of you are, are doing well. And uh, I'll see you guys all next week. Um, so now I'm gonna kick it off to our hashtag we are CLC with our very own Pastor Andrew and Kristen. Take it away, you two. All right, good morning, everyone. Um, welcome to another hashtag we are CLC moment. And during this season, we want to tell stories um, about ethnicity and faith. And so as we um, are continuing to learn about justice and how to be, be better allies with people of color, one important step in this process is doing the work of um, understanding our own ethnicity and how it relates to faith. So um, this morning we have Kristen Fu. Uh, Kristen, you wanna say hello to everyone? Hi, hi CLC. <laughs> uh, okay, so Kristen, hey, thanks for joining us today. And um, one thing we know about you, Kristen, is that <laughs> your ethnicity, ethnic identity, it's an important part of your spiritual growth. And so um, can you tell us a story of how that happened for you? Yeah. Um, I mean, the whole story is um, a culmination of many moments, but I will share one moment in particular that was formative, um, <clears throat> which was in my very last semester of undergrad. Um, I took an Asian Americans in media course. Um, and I went into the class really excited to talk about like Asian American media representation because I had spent uh, all the previous years as a media studies major. Um, but what I actually developed in that class and came out of that class with was my first real introduction to Asian American history um, and particularly histories of Asian American engagement in social justice and um, political action. So one of the films that we watched was um, that documented this was a documentary titled Who Killed Vincent Chin? Um, this film told the story of Vincent Chin, who was a Chinese American man living in Michigan um, and he was beaten and murdered by two strangers, um, two recently laid off work, auto workers in, in Detroit. Um, and the film just followed that story and the subsequent protests and civil rights trial um, that were primarily led by Asian Americans. So I, I felt a lot of things watching this film. Um, I think the main thing I felt was anger. Like I was just enraged that this happened to Vincent Chin. I, but I was also angry that I hadn't learned about such a 
pivotal civil rights case until that moment in class, like until my senior year in college. Um, it felt like something I should have learned earlier. And, um, but I think with the anger, I also felt really emboldened because um, it, was, it was just extremely powerful to see Asian American community members, lawyers, even Vincent Chin's you know, immigrant mother leading the push for justice and civil rights um, in response to, to this hate crime. Um, because I also had never really seen that before. I had never seen us in the center of like political action, especially for civil rights. Um, so, and this sort of moment that I had in class came right um, at the right time because it really aligned with when I started following like the beginnings of the Black Lives Matter movement, um, kind of around 2014, 2015. And um, it was like my early years of looking more critically at our country's criminal justice system. Um, so uh, there was a lot of rage I was already feeling uh, reading about the murders of Trayvon Martin, Michael Brown, Tamir Rice, um, but I didn't know what to do with that anger. And um, I even wondered like, where do I fit in as an Asian American? So, so watching films um, in that class that specifically depicted like, Asian American moments in history of like political resistance and engagement helped me to not only to see how like history was repeating, but also how someone like me could respond. Um, so, so after that class, I just knew part of my role was going to include learning more. Um, there was so much Asian American history that I didn't know at that point that I knew I needed to um, in order to like ground my actions today. And so, Kristen, um, my, my question for you is like, how is this journey that you've been on, where you've been connecting the dots between Asian American history and Black Lives Matter, how has this all impacted the way that your faith has developed? I mean, how, how has it impacted the way that you see God? Yeah, um, in a couple of ways. Um, I think the first way was just noticing God's presence in all of it. Um, I think one thing that I, I committed to after that year was just trying to learn more about my own family's his story. Um, and so learning more over the years, I'm, I'm recognizing like the resilience and the strength um, that is part of my family's experience and, and also how God has been present and faithful to my family through all those generations. Um, and I also began to see God as a God who meets us in our anger and our lament. Um, so, you know, I was connecting these dots in class, but I was also connecting the dots with my face because of conversations that I was having with some folks in my Christian fellowship at the time. And um, so through the guidance that I received there, I was reading scripture with this new lens basically and you know, noticing how God was meeting people in the Bible in their anger, in their lament, um, and specifically also how Jesus showed righteous anger many times, did radical things many times to address injustice um, throughout his ministry. So it just, yeah, it, it completely shifted my lens and also sort of how I related to God with these new, um, I don't know, big emotions that I was feeling. <clears throat> um, thank you, Kristen. Thanks for sharing your story with us. Your story is a part of our story. And so it means a lot to have you share. Thank you. Thanks. Um, so everyone, it is still me again, uh, uh, but this time it's for a pastoral prayer. Um, now is an important time for many of our families in our church, and a lot of you are going back to school, and I can just sense like through the screen just how happy you are about that. I can feel that joy. Um, I'm kidding. Um, some of you are going off to college for the very first time, woohoo, and some of you are returning to college for the first time, woohoo, welcome back, and um, but 
we're, we're doing all this during the COVID-19 season, which poses some real challenges. And one of those challenges is isolation from spiritual community. So instead of going to Zoom fellowship, you're like tempted to hole up in your room and just watch that Korean drama. And my daughter would tell you, don't do it. You know, watch Avatar instead. I'm just kidding. Um, the scripture says this. The scripture says in Hebrews, let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another all the more as the day draws near. Perhaps the best advice that I can give to all the people who are going to college for the first time is this. I would encourage you to proactively go to a college fellowship. Um, I, I did it. Uh, my wife did it, uh, and it changed our lives. We grew so much in Christ. Uh, I would encourage you to find a college fellowship in the first few weeks. Why? Because, you know, people make friends in their first few weeks, and then they stick with their friends, and you become like your friends. So if you can find friends that help you love Jesus, that would be a gift of eternal value. So um, let me pray for you all. Um, please pray with me. Lord, we pray for all of our students that are heading off to college. We ask that you would give them wisdom, help them to make wise choices, help them to choose with each choice to give you glory. Please give them friends that will help them grow in Christ. And Father, we also want to pray for our returning college students. Please help them during this COVID-19 season to stay connected, connected to you and connected to others in faith community. Please remind us that this journey ahead, you have promised to be with us. So no fear. And let us draw joy and comfort from your company. We pray all these things in Jesus' holy name. Amen. All right, Ben, it's to you, brother. All right. Thank you, Pastor Andrew, and thank you, Kristen. You know what? I, that's one of my favorite passages in the Bible, Hebrews 10, 24, and 25. And uh, that was a great advice of uh, coming freshmen because, you know, I, I got saved um, during my campus ministry on campus. So um, I, I am very, very uh, excited to meet uh, the, the new incoming freshmen. So, uh, hey, uh, my name is Ben. Um, and, you know, um, I'd like to start off uh, by a, telling you a story before I present the uh, message. And this is today's uh, little humorous story. Uh, one day, a, an evangelist, a priest, and a minister were in a rowboat in the middle of a pond fishing. And uh, none of them had caught anything all morning. And then the evangelist stood up and said that he had to go to the bathroom. So he climbs out of the boat and walks on the water to shore. And then 10 minutes later, he comes back into the boat. And then the minister decides that he needs to go to the bathroom. So he climbs out of the boat and walks on the water to shore. And then, of course, 10 minutes later, he comes back onto the boat. Now, the priest looks at both the evangelist and the minister and decides that, you know what, I've got as just as much as faith as these two guys that I'm going to go and try to walk on water too. So he stands up and he excuses himself and he steps out and he makes a big splash down into the water. And then the evangelist looks at the minister and says, do you think, uh, do you suppose that we should have told them where the rocks were? Without faith, uh, it is impossible to please God. You know, um, most of us have little trouble selecting a possible course of action uh, when the results are inconsequential. I mean, it's no big deal choosing Palmolive over Don 
for your dishwashing liquid soap. Or to wear a, a gray scarf rather than the red one. Or, or to choose ch a cherry jubilee over mint chocolate chip. Now, sorry for those of you guys who are mint chocolate lovers. So then it's kind of obvious that and evident that life is made up of making choices and decisions. You know, as you know, that we are on a sermon series called Walk by Faith. And you know what? Um, I, I've been, you know, praying and thinking about this all week, right? Actually, a couple of months, actually. And I realized something kind of very profound that, you know what? It, isn't faith supposed to be normal? For all the believers, I mean, I mean, that's why we're called believers, right? I mean, it's in our nature in Christ to believe in, in the one who is perfectly faithful. Amen. And you see, when the spirit of God took resident in us, I mean, he exudes in us the confidence of the father and all of our relationships with the Holy Spirit that leads us to faith and confidence in God. But you know what? Unfortunately, knowing it and believing it or actually carrying out our that faith seems so kind of distance. You know, for we know that there is nothing that I can do more or less to make God love me more, right? Or less, right? Because God in his nature loves us the way we are. And, and and you know what? There's nothing, like I said, nothing more I could do or nothing more I do less. But there is also a fact that we cannot ignore. And that is the responses or the choices that we make that brings great pleasure to God. You know, one of the stories in the New Testament that moved Jesus's heart was that the story of the centurion who demonstrated a level of faith that Jesus said, there is no one in all Israel who demonstrated this kind of faith. And so the centurion's choice of faith made Jesus you know, kind of marveled. And maybe that's why in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, he tells us that without faith, it is impossible to please God. So then, you know, Hebrews chapter 11, you know, we're on this walk by faith series and, and it teaches us that faith is making right choices and right decisions. Or if I may add, making heavenly decisions when we are faced with a fork in our road. And this morning, we're going to take a look at another man of faith. His name is Moses. Who made a lot of mistakes, even made excuses not to return to Egypt when God told him to go. But you know, the New Testament depicts him as a man of faith, a, a man of perseverance. And the Holy Spirit sort of exalts him as a man who, in his faith, made correct choices that determined the glorious outcome of his life. So uh, let's dive in and to see what kind of choices that Moses made that made him a man of faith. So uh, let us begin in verse 24 of chapter 11. And this is the word of God. By faith, Moses, when he became of age, refused to be called the sons of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer afflictions with the people of God than to enjoy the passing pleasures of sin esteeming the reproach of Christ's greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he looked to the reward. By faith, he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. By faith, he kept the Passover and the sprinkling broad, lest he would destroy the firstborn should be touched. By faith, they passed through the Red Sea by dry land, Whereas the Egyptians attempting to do so were drowned. Now, I want you to take a look at a word in verse 24. And the word is, he refused. In verse 25, it's a word, chose. In verse 26, it's the word, esteeming. In verse 27, 
he forsook or he endured. Now, these are the choices that Moses made. Now, I, I want you to notice in verse 24 what Moses gave up. By faith, Moses, when he became of age, that is, when he grew up to be 40 years old, he refused to be called the sons of Pharaoh's daughter. You know, we all know that for 40 years, Moses was groomed as a prince of Egypt. For 40 years, he served in the royal court to the, all the Egyptian pharaohs. He, he was well-educated. He was well-groomed for the court. He, he was the, under the best education sy system of, of that known world. And if Moses would have hung out, if he would have stayed true to the Egyptian culture, to the training that he had received, you know, he would have been the next pharaoh the ruler of the most powerful government at that time. That's the position that he had. He was well-educated, he was wealthy, he was well-trained, and he would have been the next ruler. But the Bible says, but he refused to be called the sons of Pharaoh's daughter. He chose not to be called the sons of Pharaoh's daughter. You know, I, I want also, also for you to notice in verse 26, he esteemed the reproach of Christ. Notice the greater riches than the treasures in Egypt. And in verse 27, he forsook Egypt. Now, this word forsook means a lot more than just leaving Egypt. He, he didn't just leave, he forsook, which means literally he abandoned it. He, he turned away from it. He relinquished it. He, he made a conscious decision not to follow the ways of Egypt. Now, uh, okay, Moses, you had all the money. You had the best education in the finest institutions. You had all the power. Then why would you opt for something different? What did Moses exchange all this for? Now, it's an important question for us to ponder this morning because when a person refused something that the world considers great, I mean, isn't it only logical that he would have something better because he refused something else? In other words, if I'm going to turn something down, man, there must be something better than what I turned down, right? I mean, that's how the world operates. That's how the world kind of tells us that's the right call. Let me explain it this way. You know, when I was little on TV, there was a celebrity by the name of Ed McMahon and his publisher's clearing house sweepstakes. Now, those of you guys who are kind of older, you guys know what, what I'm talking about, right? And this publisher's clearing house sweepstake was like winning the lottery. And I remember uh, at various night going to sleep dreaming of winning this sweepstake I, I would imagine ed mcmahon driving up uh, in my driveway in a limousine and he had this sweepstake check for me and it would say one million dollar on it and he would knock on my door and says hey ben here's this million dollar check for you saying you're the luckiest winner or the lucky winner of this month's publisher's clearinghouse sweepstake and I remember, I remember waking up from those dreams and said, yes, yes, yes. But here, Moses is saying, nah, I don't need it. I don't want it because uh, I got something better. So then, Moses, what do you have that is better than money? I mean, what more valuable to you than money? So then, Moses, why? Or what else did you choose? Now, I, I want you to take a look at verse 25. Choosing rather to suffer affliction. Well, what did you choose? Wait, wait a minute. I don't get it. What are you doing? Choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the passing pleasures of sin. By the way, do you know that this word, to choose, means to prefer or to select? It's not an impetuous or a quick decision. It's not a decision of emotion of moment. 
this word really means carefully well thought out decisions, a, a volunteer choice weighing all the pros and the cons of either side, choosing rather than the that of the wealth and all the positions and all of the advantages he chose. He selectively preferred after a period of long waiting out the pros and the cons to choose to suffer the afflictions. Afflictions? I mean, are you, are you sure you made the right decisions? So then what was Moses' standard and principle of making his choice? And so here it is. After weighing out the pros and the cons, Moses decided that the very worst that the God could dish out was better than the very best that the world could give. Now, think about that for a moment. The very worst that God could dish out was better than the best that the world could offer. Now, some of us, or even for me, as I was doing this study, wonder, is this possible? Who would make these kind of choices? Now, in your walk of faith, can you think of some people, or some of the incredible choices that some Christians have made over the years that seem so absolutely ludicrous to the world? I know of one. Have you guys ever heard of a, a, a woman by the name of Corrie Ten Boom? who in World War II used her house to hide the Jews who were fleeing from the Nazis. And she made that You know, um, something happened that, that, that I dreaded and feared. Uh, of, and I am so sorry, um, but um, I'm back. And this is where I left off. Uh, what about a missionary who would leave all the comforts of America and go to a third world country and live his life or her life out there? And what would the world say? The world will say, what, what are you doing? You, you've got a great job. You've you got a great position. You've got lots of friends. And you, you can't go, and you could go to a lake on the weekends and enjoy what life has to offer. So then 
why would you want to give all that up? Why would you want to make a choice of going into the mission field? You know, in 2000, I, I read a journal by a missionary by the name of Jim Elliott, who was a missionary who, who, who coined the phrase that catapulted my life into the mission field. And he was going on his way to power his life, even unto death for a group of headhunters. But both of you were left and people were saying, Jim, how could you give up all this, man? Are you sure you want to make the right choice? You're making the right choice? I mean, you're giving up so much. And this is what Elliot said. A man is no fool to give up that which he cannot keep, to gain that which he cannot lose. A man is no fool to give up that which he cannot keep, to gain which he cannot lose. So then why did Moses make such a choice? Why did Corey Tamboon make such a choice? But why did Jim Elliott make a, such a choice? And the answer is in verse 25 and 26, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God. Now notice this, than to enjoy the passing pleasures of sins, the passing pleasures of sins, esteeming the reproach of Christ, greater riches than the treasures of Egypt. Now here is the reason, for he looked for the reward. Do you know that in 2 Corinthians 4.18, Paul tells us that while we do not look at the things which are seen, but the things that which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not are seen as eternal. You know, isn't it true that sometimes as believers, we live mostly far more occupied with the things that can be seen rather than the things that are invisible? Maybe that's why the Bible teaches us that faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about the things we cannot see. You know, I bet it was, uh, it was a lot easier for Moses to realize if I chose this. If I hung out in Egypt, if I enjoyed all my wealth and all my position, all my prosperity, the things that I could see and feel and touch, I would feel more confident and secure. But in fact, isn't it true that it's harder for us to let go of something that we can see, touch, and feel than those of things that we can't? I mean, we as believers, we live every day far more preoccupied with what the things that we could see rather than living by some of the things that we cannot. And Paul says here, we do not look at the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen. Certainly for Moses, it was a lot easier for him to live in Egypt than to live in the wilderness where every day he had to trust God for his life's provisions and directions. So could it be that it's more difficult for us to wrap our minds around those, the things that we can see, touch, and feel, to be temporary? I mean, the house that I live in, the, the car that I drive, the bank statements that we have, it, we live as if it will last forever, even long after that, you know, we're gone. And, and in our minds, it seems so permanent. But this is where the trust comes in, that we know that in God's word, that one day he's going to destroy this earth and to create a new earth. And if we trust in God, then my 304 daybreak court, by the way, that's my address, is only temporary. And see, for Moses, all of his learning and all of his training and all of the exposures to his wealth, to positions, to power, did not lessen his desires, the desires that he had, the things of God. And, and you know what? From the world standpoint, Moses was sacrificing everything for nothing. But you know, from a spiritual standpoint, Moses was sacrificing really nothing to gain everything. And he said he would gladly give it all up to receive what he would receive in the end. 
you know, a couple of years ago, uh, a friend of my friend of mine me called uh, out of the blues. We haven't talked for years, and uh, the reason for his phone call was asking me to pray for him because he had decided to do donate one of his kidneys to one of his brothers, and he was scared. Uh, uh, fear set in, in in his decisions. Uh, on his decision that what if you know what I, I give up one of my kidney and, and my other kidney fails you know it's sort of like what Moses must have felt in verse 27 he forsook Egypt not fearing the wrath of the king for he endured or he preserved as seeing him or seeing God who was invisible but you know what Moses refused to bow down to the pressures of fear because of the wrath of the king and I remember um, my friend sharing with me the, that exact morning's quiet time that he had before he was reeled into the uh, operating room. And as he was sharing, uh, he was, as he was hold, holding out my hands, this is what he said. Ben, uh, this morning, God taught me that love isn't defined by what we give, but by what we give up. And now I kind of, was pondering for a moment as like, uh, but would you agree that, I, I think there is certainly a, some truth in this, 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 this quote, that love is expressed in giving of ourselves, but it is also demonstrated by what we're willing to give up for someone else. And isn't that what Jesus Christ did for us? Uh, I'm going to read to you from Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 through 8. In a different uh, translation, the message translation. And this is what Philippians 2, chapter 5, verse 8 says. Think of yourselves the way Christ Jesus thought of himself. He had equal status with God, but didn't think so much of himself. that he had to cling to the advantage of the status no matter what. Not at all. When the time came, he chose to set aside the privileges of deity and took on the status of a slave and became human. Having become human, he stayed human. He was an incredibly humbling process. He didn't claim special privileges. Instead, he lived a selfless, obedient life and then died a selfless, obedient death. And the worst kind of death at that, a crucifixion. Now, before I conclude, I, I want to say something. There is nothing wrong with money. There's nothing wrong with being in a powerful position. You know, I know many godly people have been blessed by Lord financially, and God has prospered a great number of his people. God has given a high position to a great number of people. But in Moses' case, those things would have kept him from the best things, from the will of God. For God chose him to deliver of his people, and Moses knew and that's the faith that he chose. So these things weren't wrong in, in, in themselves. But if anything like these keeps us from the great God's highest perfect will, then it is a distraction to us. Because whenever we listen to the voice of the world more than the voice of the Lord, you, I feel like faith will always be an uphill battle. Let me repeat that. Whenever we listen to the voice of the world more than the voice of the Lord, faith will always be an uphill battle. Like the Hebrew says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Did you know that Jesus was so moved by Mary's costly offering as she poured out that perfume onto Jesus' feet? And everyone is saying, you know what, that is so, it's a worth, year's worth of money. What are you doing, Mary? And this is what Jesus said. This act, this very act will be spoken on record and talked about for all eternity. No doubt about it. Faith pleases God. And as believers, this should matter, realizing that there is an element of bringing pleasure to the heart of God when our faith is special. And also, I think faith always involves certain amount of upfront risk or giving up something visible for the invisible. 
You know, um, someone once told me that there is no passion to be found playing small and settling for a life that is less than the life that we are all capable of living. Life of faith. You know, um, I've heard some people telling me, Ben, when you fall, make sure you have something to fall back on. You know, um, I, I've never kind of quite understood that kind of concept. Having something to fall back on. Now, th does it mean that I should fall back on my talents, my possessions, on my status? What does it really mean? And as I was going through this message and reading from Hebrews chapter 11, from 24 to 29, I feel like what God is saying to us today, to CLC family, that God is telling us that if we are going to fall, I don't want us to fall. I don't want you to fall back on anything except on faith. Faith in Jesus, the faith in God, the faith in our creator. Once again, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Amen? Amen. Yeah, let's pray. Uh, Lord, um, we believe from your word that the secret of living a godly life is to be able to see things in light of their eternal value. You know, I'm sure that Egypt looked really nice and comfortable for Moses. What a, pre a, pl a pressure that he had on him. But what an example that, that he is to us, Lord, for us to, to live as daily as we face choices and decisions and those that seem so small but can reap huge harvests. Lord, I pray today that the seed of your word is sowing into our hearts and that it will bring forth the fruit. And Lord, I pray that we would recommit ourselves to you, to our children, to our spouses, to our friends, and to our church. And I believe that if you help us, Lord, that to see the difference between sort of the long-term benefits and the short-term benefits and their consequences. And I just pray, Father God, Lord, that give us a glimpse this morning of you, seeing who you are, even though you are invisible to our physical eyes, as you challenge us to live spiritually. Father God, I thank you this morning. E e even the little technical difficulty in this morning, Father God, I ask in the name of Jesus that you are worthy and the message that had been sown into our hearts. I pray, Father God, that we will live by. Father God, I thank you. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Now back to you, Caitlin. Thank you, Pastor Ben, for that message. Um, we're gonna continue to respond with a little bit of uh, music, musical worship. Um, and I just invite you to reflect upon Pastor Ben's words and um, maybe reflect on, upon your own choices and your own priorities. Are you living for the world and, and the things that the world offers or are you, are you living for the Lord? Um, and that does take great faith. Um, but he doesn't, he doesn't ask us to do it alone. Um, we can do it because we have him. So let's sing this, this chorus together.
Today's benediction comes from the book of Numbers, chapter 6. Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. One more time. Lord bless Thank you all for joining us once again this Sunday. We're um, so blessed to have you with us and we can't wait for another uh, Sunday next week to worship and to dive into God's word. Um, uh, just a few announcements before we close. Um, if you have um, tithes or offerings that you would uh, like to give, go ahead and make those online at christianlayman.org forward slash give. Um, and all the information is up there for you. And if you have uh, prayer requests or needs or things that you want to communicate with us, um, we have prayer ministers available 24-7 all week long. They would love to give you a call during the week. So uh, if you do have something, um, please email your request to prayer at christianlayman.org and somebody from the prayer team will contact you this week. Um, another thing, we have our virtual social hall as usual, right after service. And so the Zoom ID and password should pop up uh, any minute now and also be in the comment section. So um, feel free to just drop by, say a quick hello. We'd love to see your faces there. Um, we also have another separate virtual social hall college uh, student welcome. So that's open to any students out there um, that will be starting right at 12. Um, so there will be a separate slide with that Zoom info, so don't, don't get them <laughs> mixed up, but um, that will pop up in just a second as well. And that information is also in the uh, Facebook, Facebook event invite. So um, if you miss it, go ahead and go back there and we'd love to see you at 12. Um, and last thing really quick, um, last week we saw a little teaser trailer for um, the Huang family's uh, move and um so we want to show that one last time for anybody who missed it right after service um so stick around and see this awesome trailer that the care team um put together so have a blessed sunday and a great rest of the week we'll see you once again next week